Good morning, everybody. Day 86. Mmm, getting my coffee fix. Fresh Ground actually made me this coffee so much better than the hotel coffee here. So, thanks, Fresh Ground. Appreciate you, man. So, as you guys know, when I got the camera like this towards me, which I don't do very often, I only do this when I'm doing like gear videos. And when I, every time I hit another thousand subscribers, I'll blast out a video like this where it's one on one, baby, in gear videos. So, I'm gonna be drinking coffee and probably eating fruit snacks through this whole thing. We will see. So, let's start with what's on the outside of my pack, everybody. And I changed a few things up uh, as far as my water bottle situation. I was carrying three of the 23 ounce smart water bottles and I was just, you know, filling them up with water, screw my filter on and drink right from there, which means no drink mixes, no flavored drinks at all. You're just drinking water. And I was kind of like, you know what? I kind of like to have some drink mixes, some flavor. I've been drinking water for a long time on trail and I kind of, it's time to switch it up. So what I did everybody, I got rid of one of my 23 ounce smart water bottles and now I'm rocking this 28 ounce uh, Gatorade bottle. It's got Kool-Aid in it right now from, of course, Fresh Ground. So don't be surprised to see me drinking this too. And that's my, that's my clean bottle, everybody. So I never put dirty water in there. I always filter water into there. That's how you do it. You don't want to get Giardia, trust me. Okay, same pot. So this will be on my left-hand side, everybody, when I'm walking down the trail. Boom, Gatorade bottle, umbrella, all right here. And this is the Go Light umbrella, everybody. Eight ounces. <laughs> Tell you what, if I didn't have this, uh, doing videos in the rain would be almost impossible. So this is how you guys get videos when it's raining out. Uh, it covers me so good. And the umbrella, I've said it before, it's the difference between being wet and being soaked. I'm never soaked with this umbrella, everybody. When I'm hiking, uh, probably from here all the way up, it's dry. So, yeah, if you're going to be doing doing videos and you want to do any footage in the rain and not have to worry about your phone cleaning it off all the time from raindrops, this might be the thing for you, everybody. Eight ounces. And then I use this every time it's raining, unless it's like blowing wind too hard where you can't deploy this umbrella. Then I just go right to my rain jacket. But... This thing's gold out here, if you ask me. This is worth every ounce that it weighs. And I'm about ready to cut this string off just to save a little more weight. I don't know why. It probably don't weigh nothing. All right, let me, I gotta figure out a place to pile all this stuff. I guess we'll just toss it right there. So that's everything out of my water bottle pocket on the left-hand side. The other side, which this is full of Kool-Aid too, uh, this is a clean bottle at the moment. It's not going to stay a clean bottle. It's a brand new bottle, so I just filled it up with Fresh Grounds Kool-Aid. And I'm, I left another bottle. Actually, it fell out of my pack. It's in Fresh Grounds van right now. So usually I have two of these 23-ounce smart water bottles. They're usually both dirty on my right-hand side. Uh, right here. Boom. So, yeah, that's what it is. That's my, my water storage, I guess you could call it. Uh, when I was going northbound and most of the way southbound, I had that knock bag, C-N-O-C, knock, uh, the two liter bag. Uh, but I don't like spending the time to fill that bag up, squeeze it into bottles. So I just carry two dirty bottles and one clean bottle. And what I'll do is with one of my dirty bottles, I know Kool-Aid is a bad example. Anyways, one of my dirty bottles, I'll just fill that up and squeeze it into my clean bottle, everybody. One clean bottle is all I need for drink mixes. And uh, if I was going to be rolling into a town where I could get more Gatorade bottles, I'd probably just make this a dirty bottle too on the last day. But just because I don't like squeezing water into another container, I'd rather just fill up that container and drink from my Sawyer Squeeze. So that's what that is, everybody. That's pretty much all my water. Okay. And then I got this, this little, I'm not going to take it off. It's like a Velcro circle thing right here so uh for wet socks or anything wet that i want to dry out which 
in this temperature, nothing's drying out, it's just freezing. Then I like put it on here and Velcro like socks in there. Boom, and my socks will dangle. Okay, so my sweat rag, which is really a cool rag actually. Look, Appalachian Trail, baby, the conservancy. So Scott and Kathy Fails actually bought me this one. And the one I was rocking from Jim Dickey is now in my cook pot. So, yeah. Thank you so much for this, Scott and Kathy Fails. This is, and it's orange too for hunting season. Perfect. This pocket right here is just for my phone, everybody. Look, yesterday was snowing on me, so I put my Embrace the Suck patch on here. <laughs> Pretty funny. I'm going to change that back to the American flag, the one that John Marsden gave me. Don't ask me how I keep all these names straight. I don't have a list anywhere. I'm just remembering, which is crazy. And then this right here, everybody. So instead of using toilet paper like I did on Franconia Ridge to keep cleaning off my lens because it was miserable up there, this is like a little lens cleaner rag that Al, if you guys remember Al from New York, he's the one who took me to get this new phone, the Sprint Store. So thank you, Al, for this. Pretty amazing. I use this thing all the time, everybody. I should have washed it while I was here, but it's still not bad. I'm gonna put that back in there so I don't lose it. Then my phone always goes boop right in there. This is only pocket. This this is just for my phone, everybody. All right. Let's go to the outside of the pack in this nice big mesh pocket, everybody. I love this pocket. I can't say enough good things about this mesh pocket. So let's just get into it. So what I do usually is whatever snacks won't fit in here in my fanny pack for the day, I'll just put them in this little Ziploc bag. Look, I still got snacks in here. Starburst, Three Musketeers, and some peanut M&Ms. So that way I don't have to get in my food bag during the day. I just put everything I need for the day in here as far as food. And I don't have to open up my pack. I mean, it's right there in the outside pocket, which this outside pocket's big enough for a lot of stuff, everybody. So yeah, snacks. And then, everybody, my guidebook. Check it out. Some of you guys might be wondering, look, one. <laughs> two. And I always carry hot hands in there just for emergencies. Easy to get to. Okay. Three Ziploc bags, everybody. Pretty crazy. And I got a pen in there. That's the way I can do my mileage, my end of day update, and circle the shelter I stayed in. I don't know if you can see the pen or not. But there's a pen. Just a little big round stake pen. Pretty simple. And look how thin the book is getting, everybody. Awesome. See, this is what I do. Look, I circle where I'm staying. Oh, here, let me flip you. Yeah, that's right. So I circle where I'm staying, right down where I came from. And then uh, I circle the mileage too for you guys too. Well, for me, so I can remember to say it in my video. So, yeah, three Ziploc bags for a guidebook is kind of, uh, kind of excessive, I guess. But I got my guidebook wet in Vermont one day, just having it in one Ziploc bag. And it's like, oh no, I hope I don't ruin my book. So, ever since then, everybody, I've been putting it in three Ziploc bags, which pretty dumb, actually. I mean, two would probably work just fine. <clears throat> but like I say, my guidebook, I don't want to get in wet, because that's how I do all my end-of-day recap videos and stuff. All the information is right there. Guidebook, outside pocket, boom. And I'm going to try to make this video quick, but it's not looking like it's going to go quick. Okay. Outdoor research. The Helium 2 jacket, everybody. Uh, I've had this, this will be the, this will be my third through hike with this, with this same exact jacket, everybody. And I pretty much just use this for wind uh, because my umbrella keeps me super dry. Unless I say, like I say, if it's blowing rain, and I'll bust this out and just pack on my umbrella and pack. But look here, everybody. I got in my, in my pocket, pocket right here for my rain jacket I've got these gloves so these are just some REI mittens which uh, are waterproof so 
yeah, when it's raining, wet and cold, I put these on over my other gloves, which, yeah, I usually don't carry this much, this many gloves, but you never know, everybody. If I get wet, those will keep my hands dry. My other gloves are not waterproof, so put these over the top of them, I'm good to go. Outdoor Research Helium 2. I really don't have nothing bad to say about this jacket. I mean, I don't wear it to the point where I sweat out. If I'm sweating out, like I say, I'm just using my umbrella anyways. And when if it's that rainy and wet and I'm sweating, I just need to slow my roll uh, and not sweat out because yeah, you just don't want to sweat out your rain gear because you're only be wetter than what if you just got rained on. So yeah, rain jacket, done. Okay, my orange safety vest for hunting season. Yeah, I guess it's a necessity. I mean, I wish I wasn't hiking the hunting season, but that's what it is. Uh, and then Bob, Tina, and Bobby Trimble got this for me at Cabela's. Thank you for that. Okay. The rest of the outside. Oh, look at this, everybody. You guys are going to be amazed. Black Diamond Spot, everybody. Uh, Fresh Ground actually gave this to me. Because uh, he knew I was going to be night hiking. I was really hesitant on taking it. Because I've got a flashlight that I love. But. As much night hiking as I'm going to be doing. Usually it was just in the morning. So. I didn't mind just holding my little flashlight in my hand. Going for like two hours. But now it's like. Two hours in the morning. Two hours at night. It's like. Eh. Yeah I'll take it fresh ground. Let me try it out for a little bit. So I've had this with me for about. Five days. Wherever I met fresh ground at. He gave me this. So that was right in the uh, Shenandoahs. First day I went to Shenandoahs, I hooked up with this from Fresh Ground. So thanks, Fresh Ground. This actually, this Black Diamond Spy is really good. I mean, it'll, it's got two, well, it's got a bunch of different modes. A red light, which is perfect for around shelters. If you're not going to be, if you're going to be staying in shelters, use a red light. Don't be blasting people in your face with your bright light. It's not, not hiker etiquette at all. Keep your red light or green light on. And this has got a, a spot, boom, it hits the trail perfect, or you can like click it again and it widens out the light. So for a camp, use the wide light. Hiking, use the spotlight. I think that's why they've called this Black Diamond Spot for sure. Uh, and I, to be honest, I wouldn't have bought a headlight uh, because my little flashlight is just fine. But since I've added so much weight to my pack going southbound, it's like, hey, what's a little more? I'll take it fresh ground, thanks buddy. Headlight. <laughs> Sawyer Squeeze, it's in a Ziploc bag because the temperatures are so cold lately that I just put it in a Ziploc bag and then I put it in this pocket of my Patagonia R1, everybody. And it keeps it from freezing. So I'll sleep with it here, I'll hike with it here if it's freezing temperatures, and then I'll just take it out, screw it in my bottle, take a drink, boom, put it back in my pocket. Because these freeze, they're junk. They don't work anymore. So... Keep your Sawyer squeeze thought out. Don't let it freeze on you. Or you're gonna be you're gonna be tempting fate with Giardia, everybody. And you do not want Giardia, trust me. It's no fun. So keep your Sawyer squeeze unfrozen. That's my water filter. Toilet paper. Can't go wrong. You gotta have it. Pretty simple. It's toilet paper. The Z-Pax uh, carbon fiber tent pole, everybody. This thing is nice. It's super light, too. I mean, it's like a feather. Can't even tell it's there. Uh, but it's a necessity for my tent because I don't use hiking poles. So, perfect. Eddie Lau actually bought me this when I got off the long trail and got back to Lincoln because I lost my homemade one that Fresh Ground and I made when I went north in Hot Springs. Yeah, Fresh Ground and I made me a tent pole at the Outfitter in Hot Springs going north. Now I lost it hitchhiking on the long trail. I threw my backpack in the guy's truck and it must have fell out and he had a bunch of ski poles in there that were red. Anyways, I lost it. Eddie Lau hooked me up with this when I got back to Lincoln, New Hampshire. Thank you so much, Eddie Lau. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Lau. He's, he's the man. Okay. Oh, ooh, good catch. Tent stakes in my titanium toques spoon bag, which I don't use my titanium spoon from Tokes, but I do use this bag. And look, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stakes, everybody. Just like this. 
they say, well, this one says gear top, <laughs> but they're all the same. Just this one's a different color. They're all, all the rest are silver. So eight of those. I could probably use 10 for the Plexamid uh, when it's like blowing wind. I mean, you probably should use 10 stakes. But what I do is I just use eight and then where the last two stakes are supposed to go for the tie outs, the guy lines, I'll just grab sticks, break a stick, use that as a tent stake for my other two guy lines. So I could probably actually ditch two more of these and just use little sticks for my other guy outs. But I don't know, eight stakes, perfect. And I haven't lost one yet in a couple years. So still rocking the same ones from 2018. 10 stakes, done. And then everybody, what else I got here on the outside? My little clothespins. <laughs> so these are what I keep the condensation down in my tent with. I roll the doors up halfway, clip these on, boom. Even in the rain, I can have my doors open and I don't get much condensation, everybody. I get a breeze going in my tent. I set it up to where I'm getting a breeze. I don't want condensation. Condensation is no fun to deal with. It's just a, it's a, yeah, it's not, it's an evil thing, condensation. So a couple of these bad boys will eliminate condensation for most people. If you just, if you just use them right. And I went into that, I did a little video somewhere showing how I did, what I did with those clothespins. So they're somewhere out there in my hike. Okay, that's everything on the outside, everybody. Now, oh, no, it's not. Look, these are pretty much just luxury items, everybody. Here's my mama, my mom's ashes in the dementia ribbon. Look, she's in there, a little bit of her, anyways. Uh, northbound tag, or no, northbound tag, southbound tag, 2018 tag. So, I wouldn't have to carry these, but I like to. So, yeah, it just reminds me of like, well, of how many times I've hiked the AT, I guess, which is awesome. And they didn't make them back in 2012, or I'd have that one on here too. All right, let's get inside here where all the good stuff's at. <laughs> Man, this might be a long video. I'm sorry, everybody. But you know me. My videos aren't short. Food bag. Kind of tiny right now because of Billy Miles, that box that he hooked me up with yesterday. I haven't put any of that food in here yet. So it's almost empty. This is the, uh, the Light AF. See their logo? The food bag. And I, to be honest, there's, it's, I don't know. My, there's nothing wrong with my Z-Packs food bag at all. But I do really love this square or rectangle bottom of this food bag. The way I pack my cook pot and stuff. Ooh, toothpaste. Toothbrush in my food bag. This stuff, this stuff here is bear candy, everybody. So keep it in your food bag. And, you know, suckers. Some food. It's just food. The rest of this is food. So this is my... My cook pot, everybody, I keep it closed with an umbrella because I don't use stuff sacks. I got a bag liner. Stuff sacks are anal, I think. You're getting too many bags in there. Yeah. I just use a trash compactor bag and cram everything in there. And I don't use dry bags for everything. I used to, but not anymore. It's kind of pointless if you ask me. If you got a compactor bag for a liner, you don't need all these stuff sacks. So I just keep my lid closed with this rubber band. Simple. And then... So, hold on. This here is the BRS uh, canister stove. Jeez, I'm having a crazy time with this. BRS, everybody. It's like 15 bucks from China on Amazon. But I've had this. This will be my third through hike with this thing. You're not really, after my first hike, uh, the regulation right here to regulate the flame, you know, uh, yeah, it's pretty much full board or off now. So, but this thing's great. You can't beat the weight and the price 15 bucks. I mean, come on. And then the bandana that Jim Dickey gave me, uh, in the whites and my fuel canister. So what I do, everybody check it out. I put my fuel canister with a bandana around it. 
drop it in my cook pot, fold my stove up, which is really simple to do, put that in my cook pot, put my bandana back on there, and my lid. And that's what that is. That's my that cook system. All right, let's get in here. <laughs> These gloves, everybody, or mittens, they're like, see, they got the fingers where they're like, you can still run your phone, but then when your fingers get cold from holding your phone too long, doing videos long, like I do, <laughs> and then, oh, and the hand warmers fit in there perfect. And then you just close them up to a mitten, everybody. These are awesome. John Miller, the guy that took me to New York, everybody. He gave me these gloves and he gave me the other gloves that are in my rain jacket too. So with these gloves and those waterproof covers for these, my hands are good to go, everybody. And like I say, that's the most pairs of gloves I've ever used. Going northbound, I was super lightweight. And coming southbound, I'm just like, whatever. I don't care about lightweight anymore. I just want to, I just want to be comfortable and go. Okay. Rain pants, everybody. These are, hold on, let me find the, lo the logo here. Mountain Hardware Rain Pants. And I love these things because, let me show you why. So they got this zipper here, everybody. Look, that goes, your whole leg can unzip. So getting these on and off without taking your shoes on or without taking your shoes off, Man, these things are gold. So who wants to take their shoes off, put rain pants on, and take their shoes off to put, take them back off? Not me. So this full leg zip is awesome. And then like, like even the top zips down, so the bottom zips up, top zips down, so I can zip the bottom down a little bit and put my hands in there. <laughs> these things are nice. They're not the lightest, but they're worth their weight in gold. Trust me, especially cold temps. Yeah, I don't wear these in the rain. I just wear them for cold wind protection so far. I haven't had cold rain yet going southbound, so who knows? And I bought these going northbound in the whites uh, to deal with the snow we were dealing with. I wanted to post hole with pants on, and rain pants were probably my best option. So mountain hardware rain pants, full leg zip, baby. Easy on and off. Don't even have to take shoes off. Okay. Then we got, hold on here, let me, let me dig it out of here. Everything's packed in here so tight that sometimes it's hard to get stuff out. Okay, okay, hold on. This is everything that's not in my trash compactor bag, everybody. So, this is a Z-Pax Plexamid tent. As you all know, this is my second one, but they stood by their product, so, yeah. And I actually love this tent. I mean, for, you can't beat the weight. 14.8 ounces for a tent? Yeah. It's not a two-person tent. It's barely a one-person tent. If you're taller than 5'7", maybe, 5'8", I don't know if I'd get this tent uh, because your feet and your head might be touching the ends. But me, I'm like, what, 5'3", five, 5'6", five, somewhere. I'm short. So this Plexman's perfect for me. Yeah, I love this tent, the, the, yeah, like I say. I've never been wet in it. I've never been, never had really had too much condensation because I don't close my tent up. And uh, the only thing bad about this tent, everybody, is the price. But since they stand behind their product, really not a bad deal. So, Z-Pax Plexamid, I love this tent. Like I say, if you want more room, go ahead and get if you want to stick with Z-Packs, you don't have to. Like I say, okay, let me start off with this. Well, I should have started my whole gear video with this. What I'm using, everybody, is not, I don't recommend uh, you just buy everything I got just because I'm using it. That's, no. Figure out what works for you and then go get it. The Plexmid is small for a lot of people. So my backpack does not come inside with me anymore. And I'll go into that in a little bit. But yeah, you can't beat the Z-Packs Plexmid tent. If you're looking for cutting a bunch of weight, that might be the tent for you. Might be, I don't know. You'll have to try it out yourself. Okay, now we're going inside my trash compactor bag. This is just a white trash compactor bag. You can get at Walmart, so pretty simple. 
Okay. And then, so inside my compactor bag, everybody, is my Enlightened Equipment Torrid Jacket. Synthetic, uh, 7D material on the outside, 7D material on the inside. You got to special order these, everybody. It takes like eight weeks to get them. So you order it, they make it, and then they send it to you. It's not like they make a bunch of these, have them laying around the cell. They wait till you pick out what you want. So I got the thinnest material outside, thinnest material inside. Synthetic, so if it does get wet, I'm still staying warm. Uh, but everybody, uh, when I went when I went northbound last year in 2018, I used the Arteryx Cerium down jacket. And that thing, to be honest, is warmer than this. I mean, it's heavier. Don't get me wrong, it's heavier, but it that Arteryx down puffy I you have at home is a lot warmer than this thing. So, I don't know. When I went northbound, it was all about weight. And when I came southbound, I, I like the jacket. Don't get me wrong. I stay warm in it, but the Arteryx jacket is a little warmer. But Enlightened Equipment makes some great gear, everybody. And I think if I would have gotten a thicker material on the outside, it probably would have been warmer, too. It probably would have blocked the wind a little better. But this thing's great. I'm not going to lie. Uh, 6.4 ounces or something like that. I mean, you can't beat the weight of this. And it's, it's warm enough. I mean, I'm not getting cold in it, so. But I'm not as, like, toasty as I was in my Arcteryx one, for sure. So, yeah. The Enlightened Equipment Torrid, Torrid Jacket. It's nice. I like it. And if I didn't like it, I would have got my Arcteryx back. So, yeah. Yeah, actions speak louder than words, everybody. I'm still carrying it, so. That's what it is. All right. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me just pull this brick out right here. Look at this, everybody. This is, besides my food bag, this is the heaviest thing in my backpack. And it's all for getting these videos out, baby. So, boom, electronics. <laughs> this has gotten out of control, to be honest. I got stuff in here I don't really need anymore, but I'm still carrying it for some weird reason. So I'm carrying two, two of the 10,000 uh, milliamp anchor batteries. This is a newer one with a plastic coating. It's way lighter than this one with a metal coating. But for some reason, I haven't switched this to a plastic one yet. The newer one charges faster uh, on the plug-in to charge the battery. It charges faster. And I think it charges my phone faster. But this old one I had, and I was like, it still works great. I'm not going to just get rid of it because it's not as light as this one. So two 10,000 milliamp batteries. Yeah. And I'm thinking about actually getting rid of this metal one and keeping this one and then buying a 20,000. So I'll have 30,000 milliamp. Yeah, that way when I'm in my tent at night and I got service, I can listen to music all night. Because for some reason when I'm sleeping at night, I like to listen to music. Uh, when I'm hiking during the day, I don't really listen to music at all. Only a couple times have I done that hiking the trail. But at night, when I'm in my tent, if I wanted to watch YouTube videos or listen to music, that's why I'm thinking about trading this one in for 20,000, sending this one home. Then I'd have a capacity of 30,000. That'd last me for any hike I'm doing. So two 10,000 milliamp anchors, sorry. And then when I was coming to northbound, when my way was taking me to the trail, I picked this up, boom. Double USB plug-in. I like how this flips up so it's not poking stuff in my pack. And this is 2.4 amps. Uh, I know Anchor makes one that's like 3 amp, which would charge everything even faster. But, man, these batteries take forever to charge anyways. So, what's another 0.6 amp? I guess I don't really know amps. So, maybe it is a lot faster. But, don't bother me. When I charge everything up, I'm usually in a hotel room. So, I got all night. Um, my... These are like Le Feel Eel or something. I don't even know the name of them. Katie Sutherland uh, gave me these when my audio was all messed up on my last phone. And these are nice for like when you're around other people to edit your videos or listen to music in your tent without bothering people. Uh, when I'm making my videos, I go away from everybody. I don't like people knowing I'm doing videos out here, especially other hikers. I just, I'd rather keep it to myself. It's not like I'm out here 
Ooh, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. That's not me, everybody. The less people know on trail, the better for me. And then I picked this up the other day. Oh, when I got my new phone, the iPhone 11, I got this. So now, with this and this, I can charge both batteries with this and charge my phone with this. Yeah, a lot of charging going on, trust me. This is my uh, luxury item, I guess, for my electronics. A six-foot USB, well, charging cord for my iPhone. That way I can lay in a... Sorry, I'm burping. That way I can lay in a hotel room on the bed anywhere and have this thing plugged in. Because like I say, when I'm in a hotel room and I'm playing on my phone, I'm going to be laying in that bed getting my rest, baby. So... And then, I don't know why, I, I can't explain why I'm doing this, but these are the phone, headphones that came with my iPhone 11. They're brand new, so I hate to just throw them away. So yes, everybody, I'm carrying two things of headphones. One's wireless, which I love. These are wired. I don't know why I'm carrying these. They might hit the trash today. I'm not sure. I kind of like doing these gear videos because then I'd be like, yeah, I don't need that. Let's get rid of it. This is just a regular iPhone charger. This is what I run from my external battery to my phone at night in my tent. Cause it's real short and I can keep everything real close in my sleeping bag. So when it's cold out, the batteries aren't getting killed. But yeah, I got two of these cords too, which I don't need this one. Who knows, I might be doing some, getting rid of some stuff, I don't know. These are the cords to charge my batteries. That's my electronics, everybody. That's the most, it's the most stuff I got in my pack is for videos. All right, let's get up. Let's get away from the electronics because every time I look at that bag and feel the weight of it, I'm like, this is crazy. All right. So I don't use a sleeping bag, everybody. I use a quilt. And this quilt is from Enlightened Equipment. Enlightened Equipment, everybody. It's a little small company. Well, they're getting bigger now. Out of Minnesota. Uh, yeah, you pick the material on the outside, the color, the material on the outside, inside. Yeah, you pick everything. The colors, everything. And this is the Enigma, everybody. The difference between the Enigma and the Revelation uh, and their quilts and light equipment is the Revelation has a zipper. You can unzip the foot box. The Enigma, everybody... Let me find it here. Has this sewn in foot box. So I don't know if you guys can tell. It's sewn. You can't open this all the way up like a blanket. It's got the foot box that's sewed. So it's lighter because they don't have a zipper. It's the only reason I got this Enigma is because it was lighter than the Revelation. It's 10 degree quilt, everybody. And what I do, I don't use the straps they send with you. You're supposed to strap it around your ear pad. I don't do that. I just clip it there. Clip it there, so two clips, and then I button, I button the top. So it's almost, it's almost like a sleeping bag with no zipper, you just clip it shut. That's what I do, I don't use the straps. I don't know why, but I love this quilt. Look, everybody, when I got home last year, I had it dry cleaned, and the dry cleaner like, put too much heat on it, everybody. So I've got these, pieces of KT tape everywhere because it's got holes in it. So when I get done with this hike, everybody, I'm going to get a different quilt. Uh, I'm going to stay with 10 degree or five degree quilt, but I think what I'm going to do, I've heard some good things about this company, Loco Libre out of Pennsylvania. I might give them a try, but I've got no complaints on this 10 degree enlightened equipment quilt uh, or Enigma quilt. I had this in the Smokies with me when it was negative five, negative 10 at Derek Knob Shelter. It did just fine. So I'm not worried about my bag keeping me warm. I've had it down to way below temperatures what it should have been. And I stayed warm. So nice quilt, light and equipment. Yeah, they got a good name out here too. So that's what I use. Okay, see, this is my pillow. And I, okay, so remember everybody how I said I'm, I try to be efficient and have everything packed up in the morning. So when I get this out at the end of the day, 
this um, this this uh, rubber band here, look, boom, right around my wrist, and it stays there all night. That way in the morning, when I pack up, it's right there. Boom, look how fast that was. Right around my wrist, okay? This is the X-Ped pillow, which I actually got here in Daleville going northbound, and it's still good. It's perfect. So when I was going northbound to get here to Daleville, I went through three pillows. The Trekology, Sea to Summit, and now I'm with the X-Ped, and the X-Ped has been holding up great. So nothing but good things to say about this X-Ped pillow. It's a luxury item, a pillow, of course, but I've said it a million times, sleep and recovery are key out here for doing bigger miles. Uh, so I, love, I like my sleep. So I'm spending a little extra weight on my sleep system with a pillow, baby. X-Ped. It's a good pillow. Neo Air. Neo Air x Lite regular length, everybody. So if you guys remember, when I went northbound, I was using the Neo Air x Lite short, which is 51 inches. Went from my head to my butt. And then I put my backpack underneath my legs. That's what I did when I went north. But when I was at home, uh, getting ready to come southbound, I'm like, you know what? What's well, another eight ounces or four ounces or whatever it is? So, yeah, a good night's sleep is key to me. So this is a regular size Neo Air X Lite, whole length. I'm laying on an air pad, great for insulation, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's worth the wait to have the full length. I think, uh, unless you want to go super duper ultra light, which I said when I went northbound, I was comfortable on the short, but. The long is so much better. I'm not going to lie. It's great. But now that I'm using the long, everybody, my backpack stays outside in my vestibule of my tent. I don't bring my backpack inside because it's not going underneath my legs like it was northbound. So, yeah, that's what that is. We're almost done, everybody. Hang tight. So, this is the uh, Patagonia Capoline uh, insulated top, the lightweight one. Uh, this thing always stays dry and always stays in my pack. So if everything else is wet, <coughs> sorry, everybody. So if everything else is wet, I've at least got this dry shirt to put on. You got to keep some dry clothes in your bag, everybody. You don't want everything wet. That's when you get into dangerous situations. So the Patagonia Capoline, uh, is always at the bottom of my pack, dry as can be. That way, if I get to my campsite at night and I'm cold and I'm wet, I can take my cold, wet stuff off, put this dry thing on, baby, and it's perfect. So. Oh, yeah. Body warmer, baby. This is for emergencies only. <laughs> emergencies only. I have not opened this yet, and uh, yeah, it's just for a case I really need it. Now, Billy Miles sent me a bunch, so I'm gonna start packing out a few of them every every time. But this one here I've been carrying for a while, just for, just in case. It's just in case, because you never know. All right. This is gonna be funny, everybody. So everybody knows I love my, my clean, fresh socks. So look, boom, boom, boom. And I'm wearing a pair. All darn tough socks. And believe it or not, right now, all my socks have got the AT sign on them, baby. Scott and Kathy Fails picked these up for me at Harper's Ferry, too. Man, they're awesome. Thank you, Scott and Kathy, for this. And these are comfortable. I've only worn them once since Harper's Ferry because I like to keep one pair, like, brand new. Just for peace of mind, I guess. I can put a brand new pair of socks on. It feels great. I'm not going to lie. Oh, you know what else, everybody? Look. So my other shoulder strap pocket, I didn't even go into this. Sorry. My other, my, this one's for my phone, right? And this one over here, everybody, is for like, for my trash, okay? But this is where I always keep my spoon. I love my spoon being handy as can be. So it's always right there in my shoulder strap pocket. So I can just take it out and start shoveling food in. Spoon, baby. Right in my shoulder strap pocket. And like I said, I just put my trash in there during the day. Be done with it. All right, we're almost we're almost done, everybody. Hang tight. Come on. 
That might as well. Okay. This is my uh, miscellaneous bag. I'm going to call it my junk drawer. I've called this this before, too. So I've got rubbing alcohol pads to, like, clean off something before I put a patch on it. I've got some Cuban tape for if I get a hole in my tent or something, I can just tape it up. Luco tape uh, and a little piece, a couple pieces of KT tape. Luco tape's gold out here for hot spots, everybody. And see how these are all nice, cut up, pretty, perfect in little squares. When I was at Amicola Falls going north, Pringles, Katad and her bus is her channel. Uh, we actually hiked the approach trail together. She gave me all these little Luco pieces and I still got them, everybody. So, yeah, if you get a hot spot, put some Luco tape on it. Problem solved, baby. A little bit of thread. Uh, this, th this thread's really nice. Uh, Yoti, uh, the guy that hooked me up with uh, the beard oil, the uh, X-Pack little bag, uh, the dried onions from Dutchware. He actually threw this in the little box too. He sent me that box to Lincoln. So thank you, Yoti. Some, oh, now that's just a piece of trash. I don't know how that got in there, but... It's not going with me any farther. And this is like some gear repair tape, like tenacious tape, everybody, like gear aid. Just just in case. I don't really know why I'm carrying this, but I haven't used it yet. Okay. Thermarest patch kit for my air mattress. You want to carry one of these with you, everybody. This is the first time. Uh, actually, this year is the first time I've never had a problem with my Thermarest, so... These are gold. If you get a little hole in your air mattress, you can fix it right there and problem solved. A couple Q-tips that have seen way better days. <laughs> oh, another Q-tip. I might have to get some new ones though. Look, piece of trash again. Crazy. Let me set that over there. Extra washer for my Sawyer Squeeze, because you never know. People lose them all the time. I've never lost one, but it's always good to have a backup. Look, I got an ibuprofen stuck in my dental floss hole. <laughs> dental floss. You floss with it. You sew with it. Pretty handy stuff. Fingernail clippers, I keep my toenails real short so they're not rubbing on each to toe next to each other. One extra contact, everybody. That's what I'm down to. So, yeah, we're going to make this work all the way to Georgia, baby. So, I know. I don't want to hear it. It's not safe. It's, it's bad for my eyes, but whatever. A couple safety pins. My way sent me these. This is a little straw, like in the hotels you get in the coffee, sugar and creamer package, you get these little plastic stir straws, okay? I cut it down, burn one end, put my sewing needles in here, burn the other end. That way, uh, if I ever need to use my needles, I'll take my fingernail clippers, bink, clip off the top, get my needles out, put my needles back in when I'm done, burn it, melt it, boom. That way your needles are contained, not poking holes and everything. And, look, oh, three ibuprofen, everybody. I've only took ibuprofen on trail this whole year, north and south, like one time. And it's for a headache. So, I don't rely on ibuprofen. Most people get up and pop it like it's candy. Uh, yeah, I'm sore in the morning sometimes too, but, man, you walk for an hour or a couple miles, goes away everybody don't just start popping ibuprofen because you're a little sore try to walk it off a little bit first I'm, i guarantee it'll work and then these are a new addition everybody from uh waynesboro jay whitley the guy that took me to the mings and he paid for my room at the quality inn thank you again jay whitley he actually hooked me up with these insulated bottoms everybody uh i haven't worn them yet but I'm holding on to them for sure because you just never know. It could get even colder than it is. But my rain pants keep me pretty warm, so. But if my rain pants are wet, if I get rained on, 
then I'm not gonna be wearing my rain pants in my sleeping bag. So these are perfect. Thank you again, Jay Whitley, for these. That's everything, everybody. Pack liner, just a contrary or a compactor bag. That's all it is. Trash compactor bag. I think the company's name is Brute. I'm not sure. But I haven't had to buy one of these yet because my way keeps sending them to me. Other people give them to me. It's perfect. <clears throat> okay. The Light AF Curve 35, everybody. And I've had so many questions on how I like this pack. And here we go, everybody. I actually, this is probably one of my favorite packs I've ever had, to be honest. Uh, this material is great they're using. Yeah. This this pocket in front, everybody, it's like, look, it's holding air. Look, it's all puffed up with air. Look at that. So, yeah. I haven't seen if it's waterproof or not. I haven't been caught in the rain in it yet, but I'm still using my compactor bag. But I'm pretty sure this is going to keep the rain out, everybody. Keep it drying inside. Look, it's holding air. If it's holding air, it shouldn't let a... Uh, well, shouldn't let water in. So what I like about this pack, everybody, is I love this huge mesh pocket. And then it's also got this pocket on the bottom of my pack where when I'm walking down trail with my hat on and I get hot, I'll take my hat off, slam it in this bottom pocket. And that way, if I get cold, I can just reach in and grab it. Don't ever have to take my pack off. It's perfect. And I only had him put one shoulder strap pocket on for trash and my spoon, uh, but they'll make it any way you want it, everybody. They'll put another one over here. I'd had this pocket for my phone, which I gotta keep my phone dry and this mesh don't do it. So this pocket's perfect for me, uh, for my phone. Uh, but yeah, you can get, you can customize these things left and right, everybody. So I, you know, and these water bottle pockets, see they got these, sorry, let me see if I can get this right for you guys. Okay, see? how it's got this little draw, like you can make it wider or you can tighten it up so your water bottle's tight in there. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about Light AF, to be honest. Uh, so far, so good, everybody. This thing's holding up great. It rides comfortable. I have no complaints. I love this pack, to be honest. Uh, it rides great. So, oh, <coughs> fanny pack. Oh, wait a minute. These are Oakleys. I don't know what kind of Oakleys they are. They're the cheapest Oakleys you can possibly buy with polarized lenses. That's all I know. So, my favorite piece of gear right now because it was made with love, everybody. My Hawk hat. I love this thing. Kathy Fails, thank you so much for making this for me. And I've got two now, actually, everybody. My brown one I was wearing for a while. And this black one. So, yeah. This is this is probably my favorite piece of gear. Probably because it's personalized and it's made me love, everybody. Uh, oh, fanny pack. So, this little outside stretchy pocket on my fanny pack is just like the stretchy material on my backpack, which I love. So, I cram that with snacks. Inside, everybody. Some cash, a couple mini Bix, my through night T T13 TI3. Sorry, this is I love this little light. Uh, and I'd use this northbound and southbound all the way till I got to Shenandoah. So, one AAA battery, man, you can't you cannot go wrong with this light. I'm telling you, if you don't use poles, this little handheld light's perfect, everybody. It's bright too, so. Yeah, now I'm carrying two lights, which is crazy. The Black Diamond Spot and this one. But this is still my go-to, everybody. I love this little light. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Gift certificates. Cracker Barrel. Walmart gift certificate. So these are from Mike Burton, everybody, around the Duncannon area. He hooked me up with a couple gift cards. $25 for uh, Cracker Barrel. $25 for Walmart. Thank you so much, Mike Burton. And he actually gave me something else. I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, but it's very, very cool. Uh, but, yeah, gift cards, they're in there, too. This is everything that's in my fanny pack. 
extra batteries. Can't go wrong. If you need, you get hiking in the dark, you need power. <laughs> a couple more extra batteries. I'm carrying way too many batteries right now. I love these gear videos because I can like shake myself down. These are little hooks that I use for when you got tent platforms. These are going in the trash. Tent platforms are gone. So I'm going to throw these away. They're cheap. Not a big deal. I can throw them away. I'm going to throw them away right now. Done. And then, believe it or not, everybody, I might be the only through hiker around right now carrying change. Usually I don't carry any change. This is gonna go in Fresh Ground's cup holder because I don't like carrying change. Oh, and my other patch from John Marsden. The one I switch out the Embrace the Suck to this one. Perfect. That's it, everybody. That's the Light AF Fanny Pack too. Which like I say, this thing never comes off. I keep this thing on all the time. It's super lightweight. Light AF, everybody, if you want their company name. And like I say, I've had quite a few uh, different gear companies reach out to me and try to let me test stuff out or try to give me stuff, I guess. And uh, Light AF is the only one I took them up on their offer because I've heard of them before I even started hiking the trail this year. And I always had it in my brain, like, maybe I should try their pack. Maybe I should try their pack. So when they reached out and wanted to be part of the Hawk support team, everybody, I jumped on it because, uh, yeah, family owned business, which makes some really quality stuff. I mean, this backpack is nice. Everybody, the material's great. Uh, the sewing, yeah, it's just made right. Everybody it's, it's perfect. He's a hiker. So he knows what it's like. He makes it for hiking, which is perfect. So thank you so much, Chris at light AF, uh, for being part of the Hawk support team, man. I appreciate you more than you know. And uh, hopefully they start making some tents. Well, I know they are making the tents. Frozen got the prototype tent. <laughs> I was kind of hoping I'd get the prototype tent to try out, but whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, so, oh, Patagonia R1. Sorry, that's a pocket. I love that pocket. The Patagonia R1. I have no complaints with this thing at all. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. Boom. And my famous AT white blaze sleeveless shirt, everybody, the white blaze. That'll be, this will be the third through hike that this shirt has went on. All in the AT, baby. So, oh. Mountain hardware. Look, the dryer, like, got so hot, it, like, put the emblem over here. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Mountain Hardware Refueler Shorts. Uh, I don't know why they stopped putting pockets in these shorts. I wish they didn't because these don't have pockets in them. So, but they're great. They're great for hiking. Oh, and all my, so uh, all my socks are darn tough, everybody. So, that's everything. That is everything in my pack. And I did not eat any fruit snacks this whole video. Are you proud of me? And my coffee's cold because... 53 minutes on a gear video. That's insane, everybody. So, yeah, that's what I'm carrying. That's a little bit of a review about everything. And I'm not changing anything else, I don't think. So, yeah, let's just take all this gear and get to Springer Mountain, Georgia, baby. Finish up this yo-yo. <laughs> Every time I say, like, I'm so close, everybody. I'm so close. And it's almost like surreal. It's, it doesn't even feel real. It's always been a dream of mine to hike the AT, to yo-yo the AT. And it's in reach, everybody. It's, it's right there in reach. All I got to do is watch my steps, don't get injured. And it's right there. Right there in reach. I just got to go grab it, baby. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to get to Springer Mountain, Georgia. And we're going to wrap this yo-yo up. And it's going to be epic, everybody. So... Yeah, thank you all for following along. New subscribers, old subscribers. Thank you all for, for everything you guys are doing. Yeah, the Hawk support team is out of control, everybody, and I'm loving it. And we're going to roll all the way down to Springer Mountain. We're just going to wrap this yo-yo up, baby. So, oh, and uh, later on today, 
I might just drop this gear video by itself since it's like an hour long. And then I'll do another video uh, for day 87 or 86. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> Anywho, that's my gear video. Uh, a little late in the game, I know that. I'm more than halfway through and I didn't show you guys what I'm using. But I've been switching stuff up, so I'm done switching stuff now. This, all what I just showed you, we're going to spring with that, baby. And uh, yeah, we're going to enjoy this last three, four weeks. And uh, we're just going to cross miles to get there, baby, like I do. So hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for sticking around for an hour-long video for YouTube, gear video. My phone's ringing. So I let you guys go, baby.